team members. Believe that your team will always be successful. Remain self-motivated even when things are going wrong as one is more likely to learn from these failures than successes. And the last but not the least mantra is exhibit quality and professionalism which means check your quality of your work, have a vision for yourself, see the bigger picture and give priority to the customer. We during our course of day-to-day -day functioning and by seeing others should seek to learn and imbibe changes that will make us better. Small changes make a big difference with the passage of time. They become habits. If you make a small relevant change, it becomes a habit in your life. You all would have heard of Aristotle, a Greek philosopher and a scientist, better known as a teacher of Alexander the Great. He says, we are what we repeatedly do. We, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Once you find a successful path, you must stay on it and guard against bearing of it. This applies to the idea that an airplane, as it travels, follows vectors that take it to its destination. If the plane veers even slightly off its path, it would end up thousands of miles off course. Each person individually travels a vector, a path through life and reaches a destination based on the choices they have made through life. In the end, I would like to say, living a good work life and a good family life have parallels with living a good spiritual life. All take discipline, hard work, and pursuit of a path towards excellence. The will to win, the desire to succeed, the urge to reach your full potential. These, ladies and gentlemen, are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. Thank you for giving me the time. Thank you very much, Supriya, for an extremely interesting and motivating address. The best way to learn is through the experience of others. Thank you for sharing your experiences with us. That was a wonderful talk indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us a woman of virtue and simplicity, Mrs. Aruna Bahuguna. And I feel privileged and elated to introduce her to you all. A graduate in history and economics from Madras University, Mrs. Aruna Bahuguna, IPS, belongs to the 1979 RR batch and was allotted to Andhra Pradesh cadre as first lady IPS officer of the state. She has several important posts, the superintendent of police, Vishaka Patnam, Vizya Nagaram, Women Protection Cell, CID, Assistant Director, Intelligence Bureau, New Delhi, Central Intelligence Officer, Joint CP Hyderabad, DIGP Intelligence, IGP Police Computer Service and Human Rights Cell, IGP Coordination, DG Special Protection Force, DGP and Chairman, AP State Police Housing Corporation, Hyderabad, to name a few. She served the Central Reserve Police Force as Special Director General before joining the SPP NPA as First Lady Director in 2014. She was decorated with the Indian Police Medal for Meritorious Service in 1995 and the President's Police Medal for Distinguished Services in 2005. Her hobbies include 
Western classical music, playing, playing piano and guitar, poetry and philanthropic activities. She is a key Gauruma and also takes part in many outdoor activities. Mrs. Aruna Bahuguna is a living inspiration to all of us and without further delay, I request Madam to address the gathering. to visit me, to console me. 
And uh, I'll never forget one of the stories you mentioned, uh, it brought back since you mentioned it now. It was when um, Alexander the Great, he was very close to his mother. And uh, uh, when his mother was growing old and dying, she told him that uh, when I die, you know, much like we are in India, in Macedonia also, they had a custom that after you die, you feed uh, people to sort of feast. And she said that when I die, I want you to go and feed, again, food only in a house where there has not been any problem or any sorrow. So after she died, Alexander went on from house to house and he couldn't find a single home where there had not been difficulty and not been sorrow. And then he realized what his mother was trying to tell him because she had known <coughs> that when she died, he was going to find it very difficult to live without her. And so uh, to praise him for that, she, he realized then that there is no place really without difficulty, without a problem, without sorrow. And this was something which I really realized what uh, this was a story told me and which something we all face. Everyone faces problems, everyone faces challenges, everybody faces sorrow and it's just a question of how you cope and how you get over it. Um, the country today is facing challenges much as all of us have faced challenges in our personal life. I don't think there has ever been a time when we have not been without problems. We have always faced these challenges. Our national security, whether it was from China, whether it was from our other neighbors, across the east and west, there are things which there are things which our country has faced, and we as police officers and we as citizens, it is our duty to do a little bit to save our country from these dangers. In fact, we always, uh, as citizens, are very quick to talk about our fundamental rights. But our constitution also talks about fundamental duties. And it is very important for us to understand what these fundamental duties are. How many of us today even know what our neighbors are doing? Who even know what our neighbors are up to? Very often, like, we, I work as you saw in the intelligence. In fact, Mr. Sushil Kumar was also very active in intelligence. Uh, he attends several postings. And we find that sometimes when you would go to a house, the people would not know the names of their neighbors. They would not know what occupation they are following. They would not know what activities were going on in the houses next to them. We find that all those, you have spoken about the Taj and the Bombay attack, how often it is that our own neighbors have been affording support, have been offering uh, succor to them, have been offering shelter to these people, and we don't even know. So I think fundamental duties are what we owe to the country. You don't have to be qualified, you don't need any special skill for that. It is as a citizen of India what you can do for your country and what you have to do for your country, what you owe to your country. So it is very important for us to know as citizens what are our duties. If a person is injured in a road accident, it is our duty to go and inform the police station. It is our duty to take that injured person to a hospital. People often take the stand that, oh, I don't want to do this because I will be called to court, I will be questioned. In fact, the Supreme Court has even delivered a judgment on this, saying that you have to take the person to a hospital and the police or the court shall not question the person about the circumstances in which they have brought that person to the hospital. Even though this is there, you find people who even heard about the a terrible Mirbai case which happened in Delhi where this girl was raped and raped and raped in a bus. She was thrown out naked on the road in the cold in Delhi with the boy and so many vehicles went past but nobody stopped, nobody bothered to even offer any kind of relief. Nobody told the police till finally a patrolling vehicle was told about it and they went and picked her up. So these are the kind of horror stories we hear. Yes, what the criminals do, what the terrorists do is definitely horrible. But I think we also have our own little bit to play where we can do something actively to make things a little better. Our country, 
Uh, and the world has definitely changed from when I joined the police. In fact, the kind of crime we had to face at that time was uh, people breaking into houses, people, uh, you know, make a hole in the window or make a hole in the roof, come into the house, steal and go away. From then to now, there has been a huge shift. Now we find that sitting at home, without even moving out of his or her house, the criminal is able to steal millions and trillions of dollars, rupees, yen, whatever currency you name it, just by, through cyber crime, through mobile crimes which are committed through the mobile, hacking into your system. Today's papers, you could have gone read up on the TRAI, how they hacked into his whole, um, uh, his uh, personal data. So you're, you are today a very public person. Everything that you do, everything that you are, is known to society, is known to the world. Even more and more with the linking of, you know, with the Aadhaar card coming up, with your mobile data, whatever you can do. In fact, one, when we conduct courses on the, the mobile phone and your what kind of data you uh, reveal to others, we have had cases where even a police officer, a very senior police officer, in fact, was once duped. There was, you know, now it has become common, that time it wasn't so common, when you receive uh, information that uh, you have received an award, you have been selected for such and such an award, or you have won this lottery, you are the lucky person. To receive this prize, you pay a small amount of 100 or 200 dollars, and they make it sound like they're writing from, you know, foreign countries, 100 and 200 dollars is a very small amount. Send it to us and you will get your prize. This was a police officer who was told that she had won an award. She paid the amount. Um, she began celebrating the award. And then a, a few days later, it came out that it was all a big hoax. Till today, though, people are warned against this repeatedly. In fact, day before yesterday, one of the uh, a person we are getting well known here in Hyderabad has gone through the same thing. He was told that uh, he has won an award. Uh, he will be getting something free and to pay this amount and to pay it, he, they ask for his bank details. He has given, though the bank keeps sending, all of you would have received these SMSs and uh, emails from him saying, do not read, read all his details and within minutes he found that money was being withdrawn and by the time he told the bank, his account was almost totally empty. So these are the kind of challenges, this is how the world has changed. Uh, in fact, I keep comparing, I was, uh, as you heard, the director of the National Police Academy. The National Police Academy trains all IPS officers, not just when they join, from their joining right to DGs. Even DGPs of state come to the Police Academy for their training. In fact, for the first time when I was there, even at the Prime Minister came and spent three whole days at the Police Academy, only to have uh, 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 at a workshop that we had with the DGs at the annual conference. So I keep saying how when we would go to a place when we were youngsters, the first thing we would ask is Pani and Most important thing would be, is there water in this place? Whether drinking water, bathing water, but we would want water. But as director when I would go to the probationers to any place, the first thing they would ask is, Yanka Wi-Fi ka password kya? <laughs> So this is the kind of change which the world has gone through. Everything is now on the net. Everything is extremely public. Everybody wants their lives to be known. Uh, when I go out with my children anywhere, the first thing they do is we have to log in and we have to tell people where they are. They have to go on to Facebook, they have to go on to Instagram, they have to tweet and say we are at such and such a place, this is what we are doing, these are the people I am with. So life has become much more public than what it was. When we joined service, we were told that you are no longer a private person. Everything, all your habits, everything about you is known. And I learned that really very fast. Because the ordinary in the house would immediately go out. As soon as you join, people would ask, what does matter to what time does she wake up, what time does she sleep, what time does she eat. And the moment they know what you like, to eat your favorite dish, Wherever you go, you would only get the same thing to me. <laughs> and for some time, I would wonder why I wasn't getting anything else until I realized what was actually going on. So we were told very early in our lives that, yes, you are no longer a private person. 
anything you do is known to everybody around you. And we were taught that be careful with all that you do. Today I find again things have changed a lot. We were told to stay away from the media. We were told don't, you know, you can never be. One of the first things we were taught was that you can, if you have to be a good police officer, you cannot be a popular police officer. Because all you are doing is checking people who are wrong, checking people who are bad. But today actually I am quite happy to see that the police officers, the senior uh, officers of today are trying to correct this. One of the first stories, an apocryphal story I was told when I joined was that a dead body was found uh, lying, uh, unidentified dead body was found lying in the village. And everybody tried to identify this body. There was a, a paper, a, a photograph put in the newspapers, pamphlets were sent out, people went from village to village, Tom Tom and saying such and such a body as one, but nobody could identify. Finally, a post-mortem was held and the doctor came out chanting, I found out who he is, I found out he's very everybody was very excited when they came out, who is it, who is it? And they said it's a police officer. We said, how do you know it's a police officer? because he has no brain and no heart. <laughs> so, this was a kind of image. Today, unfortunately, that image still persists. People still think that police officers are heartless. They just want to get their job done. Yes, to some extent, that is there. And we find this repeatedly. We have to befriend people to get information out of them. We befriend the criminals sometimes. You all know the bad cop, good cop. Uh, uh, style of interrogation where two police officers interrogate a criminal, one starts threatening, the other tries to be very good, offering food, offering water so that the criminal confides in you and then you go and use that information against the criminal. But one thing I found that as a woman police officer, yes, being the first had its advantages and its disadvantages, it was extremely difficult. There were senior officers who would often say, why did you come? This is why we don't want police women in the job. They only want this is I took maternity leave twice in my career. I have two sons. Those days maternity leave was three months. And first time I took leave when I went the second time, the then DG said again. So I said this is just the second time. There were people who would men officers who would take leave for months together. But this was three months and three months and this was the kind of reaction. But one thing I found that in India, maybe because we have the concept of goddesses, the concept of Shakti, I think the public in general uh, respect women and when they see a woman in power, they expect that woman to only be correct. They are very intolerant. If a woman does something wrong, and when I say wrong, it's not a, I'm not talking of a mistake professionally, I'm talking of a mistake of integrity. The public does not tolerate it. And so this was something which I found very, uh, uh, you know, like a guiding uh, principle for me right through my service. People look up to you, they expect you to serve them, they expect you like a goddess, they always expect you to find a solution for them. And I found a lot of the time when people came to me with their problems, maybe I was not able to find an answer for them, maybe I was not able to find a solution. But just giving a sympathetic ear, a sympathetic shoulder for them to try on was enough. So this is something for all of us as members of society. Today, everyone is in a hurry. Everybody has somewhere to go. Social commitments have become huge. Hyderabad as a city, you find a spread so much. People have to attend the wedding in Gachibali, go across to Imperial Gardens for a birthday party, come back to somewhere beside Upal and those farmhouses for a farm party. So everybody is always busy rushing around. Everyone is trying to push their children, driving their helicopter moms who are taking their children from dance class to sports uh, match to tuition to coaching to all kinds of things. But in the middle of all this, I think we need to take some time off to look inwards to see where we can offer help to somebody who is in trouble. Look and see where we can offer a word of comfort. And you will find that, as I said, Mr. Sushil Kumar took the time to come to Delhi when I had a difficult time all the way from Hyderabad. And that is really what makes a leader. When a leader takes the time off, puts in that much effort, to take a special flight and come all the way 
just to offer some words of comfort to you. You will, you will always owe your loyalty to that person. You will always admire that person. And it is something which will last with you for life. Something which I find, uh, I keep saying that wisdom, knowledge changes, but wisdom never changes through the ages. And one of the quotes of Shakespeare is to thy own self be true. So there will always be people judging you. There will always be people commenting on what you do, how you work, how you have performed your duties. But the best judge is of, of yourself is you yourself. You know what you have done, whether it is right, whether it is wrong. If you have hurt someone, whether you have hurt them, whether that can be justified, whether it cannot be justified. So whatever you do, look inwards. In our careers, I find, especially in our career, you know, when we joined service, my father was also in service. So in, when India just got its independence, everybody thought that, you know, the IAS, the IPS, these are the intellectuals, they speak English, they have been to good uh, education, good, good schools, good colleges, so they know everything. So politicians included looked up to these people, and whatever, I mean, they said, they listened. And I also find that the political leaders of those days, when I joined service, listened to what we say. It was very easy to disagree. In fact, most of the time we disagree with our political bosses because what they had in mind and what we had in mind were very often very different. They did things with their popularity in view. They had to do things for their party uh, workers and to keep their party in power. We did things according to the law. And when we explained it to them, they understood. And not only did they understand, they appreciated it. Gradually, since independence, these politicians have come to jail. I hope there are no politicians here. I'm very happy that there's no media here, so I can speak from my heart and not be quoted into what is newspapers. But the politicians of today have realized that they are the bosses. They have realized that they hold the key. And they transfer and post officers at their will and power. Though Supreme Court may give guidelines, though anybody may give guidelines, they will not allow police reforms to come into place. They will not allow the law to be changed. And today, they realize they are the bosses. So they just dictate what they want to officers of every service. I'm not saying it's only the IPS, all government officers today. They are told by the political bosses what to do. And unfortunately, there are several. Yes, there are many who stand up and still defy them. But unfortunately, this is what has hap is happening today. And another sad part is that the citizens of India are not as responsible as, or as responsive as I find in other countries. In Western countries, we find that the citizens are so conscious. Whatever happens, everything comes out publicly. Simple things like even the consumer movement. In the US, the toothpaste for your washing powder goes up by a few cents. The whole consumer movement takes it up and immediately the company is made to explain why they have uh, increased their cost or they have to bring down the cost. So that is the effectiveness of citizens in other countries. Unfortunately, in India, though people very often know what the truth is, they never fight, they never come out openly, Everybody is cowed down by this. I'm not trying to take away from the, you know, the responsibility of government officers. We have cases today where uh, 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 if someone commits a crime uh, and everybody knows that, say X has committed the crime, the chief minister tells the officer that X is a member of my party. Uh, don't look him in the case. So, okay, that is step one, which is bad enough. You let X off the crime, saying, you know, I will not gather the evidence against him or her. Then, the boss goes one step further and says, Y belongs to another party. You fix Y in that case. So, the police officer goes out of the way to gather false evidence, plant it on Y, and put Y into that case, so the rest of his or her life, Y is busy running around courts, going to jail, getting bail, coming out, and then fighting this case to its 
consolidate their name. Not only do they have to fight to clear their own uh, image in society, but basically to clear themselves and to get out of the whole case. So these are things which are going on, which in villages, towns, cities, everybody knows, but nobody talks about it. The media does not write about it. Nobody comes out because everybody has something to gain. The media has to get their advertisements, they have to get the support from the government, the, the power, power, political party in power, the government in power. So they will not write, media houses don't write. Today there is one channel, a TV channel, we all know the one I'm talking about, which has gone on record and fought against the government. Today they are in such a bad uh, shape, cases have been booked against them, totally false cases. The highest investigative agencies have been used against them. And when today they have tried to put their uh, channel up for sale, prospective buyers are being threatened not to buy that channel. And the only one who is coming forward to buy that channel is one which is being sponsored by the government. So these are the kind of things which are happening in our country today. There are issues of divisiveness, issues of um, crime, issues of you know, huge amounts of money which are involved, but unfortunately these are going on our law. And when I look back at times like when we had uh, DGs like Mr. Sushi Kumar and his kind, they really didn't bother about, you know, what was going to happen to them, what was going to happen to their children. Uh, those of us who belong to that, like my children, children, I can't even count, I think something like 15 or 20 schools by the time they even reached the fifth or sixth class till I reached the state where I put them into boarding school because this is what could happen. So we really belonged to that different era of uh, government officers who said the family will take care of itself, the children will take care of themselves. What has to happen, Jo Hona and Oga, that was the kind of thing which we, what we thought about uh, in our personal lives. But we really took our duties extremely seriously. And uh, ultimately, you spoke about choices. It is strange that we should say that. Because I feel in life, really, everything is about choices. You are always faced with a choice. And uh, when you make a choice, I think it is important to see whether you are harming anybody else. You may not be like doing things. Sometimes when the probationers used to come and talk to me, I used to say between your head and your heart, you know, your head will always tell you to do something that is good for your career. It may tell you like, you know, favor a party or like I said, favor a certain political leader. If you do this, you will get a, a, what is called a good posting. You will, you know, get something which is good for you. But then listen to your heart. Your heart will tell you what is actually right. So when it is a choice between your head and your heart, always follow your heart. Because your heart will tell you if it is something wrong to your conscience, it will trick you for the rest of your life. What matters in the long run in the end is that to be able to get a sound night's sleep. You cannot have a sound night's sleep if you have done even one small thing wrong. And this is really what is the ultimate thing in life. I was brought up on a poem which was taught to my father by his father and I was taught this poem by my father. It is by a poet called John Oxenham. To every man there openeth, away and ways and away. And the high soul climbs the highway, and the low soul droves the low. And in the sea on the misty glass, the rest drift to and fro. But to every man there openeth, a highway and a low. And every man decided the way his soul shall go. So ultimately the choice is yours, all of us, Till the day we die, face choices, and I think it is extremely important for us to think and consider the choices we have in life and what we are going to make. With that, I would like to thank the Agrabar Mathur Kaya's Association for this wonderful opportunity to be with all of you today, to share my thoughts with all of you today, and more than anything else, to pay tribute to a very great person who has lived among us. It is very, you know, people said about Mahatma Gandhi, Einstein said, for the generations to come, it will be difficult for us to believe that one such as he walked on this earth. 
I think these were really leaders of that time, of that generation, who did so much for society, which very often went unsung, which went uh, just not recognized, the kind of recognition which they deserve. I think uh, Mr. Sushil Kumar was really one of those, but I'm happy to see that his legacy lives on here and that the community is doing so much for yourselves and for society. This is one of the great features of our country that we have strong communities which serve not only themselves but serve others and which are so selflessly, as your president was saying, everybody has contributed to build this hall and I'm sure that this hall will continue to host such activities to benefit all those who are part of this society. So I wish all of you the very best and it's wonderful being here among you today. I think perhaps the first one in the Gelati to drive a car. 
and also she was Miss Women's College. How many of us knew that? So uh, uh, this profile, uh, you know, uh, tried to bring in uh, the the uh, the great things that they did, and I'm very happy that uh, uh, the family of Mr. Yadavraj has sponsored this issue of profile. Now, uh, our intention, as far as the profile is concerned, is that you know uh, we try to uh, make our own people as heroes and try to predict as much as possible about their achievements. So, um, there's also, uh, we work on a principle that, you know, we may know the person, but we know, may not know about the person. So, therefore, I seek a lot of details, so, you know, we've given more and more details. Our focus, I mean, uh, you, you find, you know, our newspapers column uh, has been increasing in terms of number of pages. And so, also, our uh, pages on academic achievements. So we try to cover these activities and also try to open up the ideas page to, you know, uh, uh, we are looking forward to some very serious write-ups uh, in the ideas phase. We've also been covering uh, the party side because our, we believe uh, in a lot of, we believe that all our beginnings should be with a religious function. So we've been given a coverage to all kinds of, and of course, uh, uh, the social events obviously get a lot of uh, coverage, and uh, we try to cover all these things in great detail uh, in the profile. Of course, uh, uh, many times uh, what makes us very really unhappy is the printer's devil always acts up and uh, gives us some very nasty surprises. And, uh, uh, well, I guess we're getting to live with that. So with these few words, I would like to invite the family of uh, Mr. Yadavraj, uh, Mr. Sudhir Raj, uh, and his wife Rashmi. Sudhir is a, a senior uh, uh, executive with Indian Oil, and Rashmi is the assistant commissioner of income tax. I also welcome uh, Sangeeta, who is in the academic side. Uh, she is the wife of uh, the youngest brother, the youngest son uh, of uh, Mr. and Mr. Tiljaraj, and uh, Yadavaraj. May I now request you to come uh, forward here, so that... Uh, please come. All of you would like to release the... The other copies of the... Someone, one word, sir. Sorry, sir. Sir, yes. Uh, I would like the other members of the uh, profile uh, subcommittee to join us here, yeah, please. Uh, that's Mr. Shradhaj, who is uh, the editor of Profile. Uh, Nilesh uh, is uh, Nilesh Mathur is on the editorial board. I don't see Mr. Vishwaraj, I thought I saw him something like that. Yeah, there he is. And uh, where are the others? Uh, okay, Mr. Jayant Kumar is not here. Mr. Pradeep Kumar Mathur is not here. What's more? Uh... All right, okay. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, the gentlemen that we all from uh, us. So, would you like to say a few words? Uh, uh, may I request to to say a few, few words, please? Good evening, dignity uh, sitting on the dais. President of the HMK Society, Mr. Vijay Mundal, the Vice President of the Society, Dr. Dinesh Raj, Gita, Gita Karan, and the Chief Guest of the evening, Mrs. Arunan Kalunan, and my cousins, Dr. Sajid, Supriya, and the director of the program, <coughs> Very good evening to all of you, first of all. We are greatly indebted to the Profiles of Committee for agreeing to publish fair tribute to our dear parents on, on this occasion. We are very much thankful to the Profiles of Committee, particularly to Rohidhar, for putting us, putting these things, putting the material, 
and uh, putting the material and the photographs together and we'll bring out this wonderful profile in front of you. Please give a big hand to For those who do not know us, I would like to briefly introduce ourselves who have released the profile on behalf of our family. My name is Sudhir. I am the fourth son of Yadavaraj and Buddha Devi, as I said. I have been out of Hyderabad for almost three decades. After 35 years, I have come back to Hyderabad. I work in Indian Oil Corporation, presently working as a senior terminal manager. I am responsible for supply of petrol, diesel, kerosene and aviation fuel to the entire state of Telangana. <laughs> My base is at Chattapalli. From there, Chattapalli Depot, we are supplying 160,000 kilolitres of fuel in a month to the entire state of Telangana. Indian oil, as you know, is a market leader. That means more than 65% of the market share in fuel business. Standing to the left is Rashmi Mahur. She has been with me for almost 31 years. She is also a working wife. Presently, she is working in the income tax department as a deputy commissioner in Aika Bhavan, Bashir Park, Hyderabad. We have both. <laughs> After spending three and a half decades in Bombay, Anipal, and Lekpur, we have come back to be at, in our roots at Hyderabad and it's a great pleasure to visit the great Sushil Mahathir Bhavan and in Hyderabad and to be amongst all of you this evening. And another lady who is sitting here may stand in next to us, Sangeeta. She is also an educationist. She is teaching in Hyderabad's most famous school, Gitanjali at Begum Great. Thank you all for being with us this evening. There's a uh, one more person tasks to do. Uh, you need to release the key profile also. Uh, may I request the ladies to release it now? Yeah. Right, Rashmi and Sagita. Is Why is she not coming for Vira? Anyway, 
very, very thank your thanks, ma'am. You have come, enlightened us, and as usual, your lecture is excellent, and there is no words which I can use in the dictionary to praise you. You are the Jhansi Irani Kevesi, Hyderabad Ji, Police Kirani. Boldly, and we all admired. We have been seeing her, listening to her, seeing her on television, seeing her photos and papers, and listening to her lectures quite a large number of times by so many of us. And she has today once again proved that she is the best. And we are happy that she is from. She is from Hyderabad, she is from us, ours. So, Vedangyara, very very proud and sensitive, not Amitya, I am not sensitive, I am not sensitive. What you said, the problems which we face, we and I, that we used to teach the higher ups, what is what I was and the director of the AIDS control project, we started. We used to teach these people and in the review meetings they used to question us. So that was going on. Anyway, we are very happy that Aruna Bhavuna is here with us and I request all of you to give her a big hand clap. We are also very, very grateful to the excellent lady of excellence. She has really talked so much. <laughs> when she wanted to start her career by just marrying. If she was married, then she would have been so much less. She was not married, she was so much less. She was so much less. She was not mentioned in any way. So many awards. Uh, as Madam has also won so many awards. Again, the award was the award of Bharat Ratna. Okay. So, best of luck to and uh, these boys and girls. I know Sajid. He has acquired the uh, all the goodness of Sushi Kumarji. Yes. I had the good fortune of working under Sushil Kumar for 10 years as his secretary when he was the president of HLT Educational Welfare Society. And you know what a meticulous man. I was always telling Sahab the doctor who would be now as I can not work out. इतने अच्छे और हमारे सीरिया हमारे मामा लोग का बोलते थे सुशील कुमार के बारे में जेंटलमैन पुलिसमैन बोलते और एवर स्माइलिंग पुलिसमैन और ऑलवेज यूज्ड टू स्माइल कभी नहीं दिखता था कि उन्होंने पुलिस के जहां डरना मारने वाले आदमी हैं बगैर ये वाले वेरी स्ट्रिक्ट ऑफिसर एंड यूरी का वाल बस्टिंग आल्सो he used to be very strict, very stern, but polite, and always appreciative. Picks up with people from nowhere and put them on the pedestal. That was Sushit Kumar the Great. As you have rightly said, she was the the person who has brought this community the dollars. I always used to tell that we have Sushit Kumar and Shravan Kumar and every family of our Viradi must produce one Sushil Kumar and one uh, Shabad Kumar, then our family will be everywhere with the anti international level. So, dear friends, such type of programs are going.
going on and you all are coming and encouraging us. We are very grateful to Mr. Yadavraj's family for sponsoring profile. And uh, 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 we have done a good job by giving the material and coming forward for this great occasion. I am also thankful to Sushil Kumar and his family, the, both the sons in laws of our city. Please stand up at least, somebody should see. <laughs> Yeah. 
but he's monitoring the arrangements from Mumbai. So I'm really thankful to all these people who have helped me a lot in organizing this program and making it into a successful one. Uh, now that we to Yeah. Uh -huh. 